Alright, so this is just a quick little video to help those who missed 11.30 the other day when we were talking about the information on how to write music, or more specifically, how to add pitches to your content wrap. So, everybody has a content wrap that they've worked on that contains whatever content lesson they were going for, as well as some rhythms, ta's, tt's, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, whatever you want to think about that. To make this work, with pitches we have to know a little basic music theory so what we have here is the staff of course our five lines of four spaces this thing right here is called a treble clef okay? it's not super important to know this except that this tells us what letters each of the lines and spaces on the staff is so every line and space has a letter assigned to it the lines are E G B D and F and the spaces are F A C and E okay it's very easy to remember the spaces because they spell face F A C and E and we always count up from the bottom of the staff so we start at the bottom and go up so when we're talking about the second space we're talking about this A right here okay because there's the first space and then the second space now to help us remember the lines oftentimes we think of a mnemonic device so one of the most popular and common is the sentence every good boy does fine and the first letter of each word is the first is the letter of the line every good boy does fine so <clears throat> when we think about music we think more specifically about the nature of what children can do. So for the purposes of what you guys are doing, it's not so much about knowing super crazy detailed things about music, it's knowing a couple of very basic things. And the first one is that there's that particular space that we have between notes that students recognize that their whoops, their brain can process. And it's this right here. And if you remember from our singing unit, we kept we kept doing a lot of engine, engine, number nine, or whatever the song was. It has this space in it. This space is called a third. Okay? And it's called a third because if you start on this line, here's E, the bottom line. That's the first note. Then the second note would be F, the bottom space. Then the third note if you're counting up note by note would be G the second line so a third always goes from line to line or space to space so a third could be space to space like this could be line to line here it's just skipping the space or the line in between the two notes and it doesn't matter where it is it still ends up sounding having that same space in between so for the purpose of writing your writing your content area song, <clears throat> you need to think about two things. The first of them is going to be this third. That this third is the relationship, the space in between notes that's easiest for kids to sing. The second thing is, is that you have to have kind of a stop or start place. And more specifically, the stop place is what matters. So for the purposes of our assignment, we're going to do we're going to stop on the letter C. So what this means is, is C is right here, it's the third space, F-A-C, although there are other C's, you could go all the way down here and that's a C too. But if we think about this as being our stop place, we can do notes above and below, thinking in thirds, but we have to end on C. So just as a short example, I'm going to put a C here, boom, C. If I were going to make a very short song, I could do, and I could, this could be a song. So I made a song with E's and C's. Or, I could flip flop them. Or, if I wanted to start in a completely different place, oops, there we go. Now I still have thirds, and that's going to sound like a song. Anything you want to do with the thirds, or anything that adds something in between the thirds. So if you say to yourself, 
Wow, I really kind of like the thirds, but it gets kind of boring to just do them all the time. It's totally okay to have notes in between to fill in that gap. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you start there or whether, let's say, you start on C. Uh, let's start in a different spot so we can still be where we can see it. Start on C and you go down. Nowhere in here did I have a leap that was farther than a third. So here's our third leap. Here's the third leap. And I filled in the gaps in a couple of spots. But when you're writing pitches, this is what you need to think. Find out where you're going to stop. So that's C for the purposes of our assignment. Pick a starting spot. Almost doesn't matter. And then work your way in between the two with pitches up or down. And there's not really a wrong answer with those constraints. You have to stop on C. And you have to keep your leap small. Because if you remember when we were doing button, you must wander, that big leap was much more difficult for us than all of the other things we had. So we want to keep the leaps small. Hopefully that gives you kind of a general idea of what's expected. So you, when you turn in your content area song, you're going to turn in so, something that has your rhythms you decided on your rap, the words you decided on your rap, and then you're going to add pitches to it like this, up or down, higher or lower, and it's going to stop on C. So the very last pitch you have, whatever that is with your words, has to be a C. So hopefully that kind of helps explain it. If it's still a little confusing about the ups and downs of the staff, feel free to check out the, the video on treble clef that I also have posted on the YouTube channel.